welcome in this new roundtable of the Indire project organized in Alhambra Monkey Week. Today we are here to take a closer look at how social media is shaping current music trends now when the songs are trending on TikTok, not anymore at the radio and television uh, stations. Social media has all has the great influence not only our lives but in the music too and we just try to explore these trends in the next one and a half hour and we have a really great guests for this to the next 90 minutes. We have Dominika Massa, musician, manager and digital marketing head at the Arban Culture Center Kino Shishka and Ment Jubiana Festival. Hello. Hello, hello. We have Anna Castillo, digital project manager at Sony Music. Hello. And we have Christian La Rosa, founder and director of Grupo La Rosa, a consultancy focused on financing and new technology for music. Hello. Hello. My name is Daniel Kamein. I'm from Hungary, from Severe Radio. I really like the music. I always follow the music trends, but just a typical fan guy. I can say so. I think I will learn a lot from this conversation, and I'm really happy to participate in this conversation today. Uh, I think the first step, what we have to step in this <laughs> round table, that try to explore how the social media uh, influenced our lives in this musical sector um, today to this level. So why it became so important? Why do you think? What do you think, guys? Maybe you can start. Yeah. I'm going first. Yeah. I think it's like the natural course of digital like revolution evolution. Um, I think the social media really became popular because of like human nature. We want to see what's happening like with everyday life of people that we know, that we follow, and I think that's basically it. Yeah, probably like uh, the evolution of how we consume content. It's changing. So as, we, as it changes, so we're finding different ways to consume every kind of entertainment media so now it's online and it's yeah content yeah i think that uh, also thanks to the technological advances platforms are evolving and and also uh, we consume in a different way but also we sh we share moments in a different way than before and and all that uh, has an impact as well in in the music consumption so that's why um, it's been a huge uh, change in w that we're living now. Dominica, what you mentioned, it was really interesting for me because you said that people want to wrote something about their friends, about their stories. So do you think, guys, the stories on the social media is the main point, is the key word, or we just try to look after more and more directions, more and more content? So what is the really... Um, the biggest deal in the social media now, the stories with the peoples or something more? What do you think? Yeah, I would say you follow someone's life, you follow what they do. Um, and also, like, I would say, as a human being, we, we, we are really nosy. <laughs> so, um, and interested. I don't know, it depends on the content and on the people. So, it depends on which content you, you watch and uh, what do you follow. Yes, um, storytelling has been always something really important for the fans. They want to know. Well, we all remember, or at least older people like me, we remember programs like TV shows like Behind the Music on MTV. So we were all like, or yeah, like Behind the Songs, all that kind of stories. So we want to know more about the artist we, we like. So storytelling is it's great. And now artists are getting closer uh, to create more content in order to engage with the fans. Well, you know this a lot better than me, yeah. Yeah, also I think that um, we're always uh, trying to find our own identity. So, um, for example, sometimes we think that it's really hard to reach people because there are so many artists creating uh, content and music, but I think there's always like, um, there's, there's people uh, who like your music. So if, if you think that you are a niche, uh, it's okay because uh, you're gonna have your public always. So yeah, that, that makes um, social media a cool tool uh, to look for uh, rich opportunities uh, in getting new audiences. Yeah, um, 
Christian, you just mentioned that at the television, for example, 20 years ago, you had a chance to watch these behind the scenes shows. And um, after that, we just saw this trend that the television and the radio with this kind of shows uh, lost the influence at this era. So actually, my question is why this behind the scenes content is take back to the social media, not on the TVs, not on the radios anymore, but on the social media because of the direct content with the bands maybe, or it, it affected something else? What do you think? Yeah, um, it's like the, in order to be close to your fans, now you have a, a more powerful tool that you can let's say, activate it anytime you want. If you're an artist, then you can, well, let's just, you know, just go live and, and we're here and, and, you know, going backstage. And if you're a fan, you love that. We always love to know, I said, uh, more about our favorite artists. So uh, having the possibility as an artist uh, to engage with fans like in real time, it's, it's, more, it's very powerful though. What do you think, guys? Uh, is it possible to build a brand or a band or a musical industry, for example, without social media in these days? Absolutely without it. I would say no, but you can use it differently. You can be really personal or you can be like really laid back and not show your personal life. For example, I think Short Paris Band, they have um, a really cool Instagram. It's only like purely aesthetics, pure like shots. Uh, really like um, studio shots, but they don't give anything else out. It's not someone going live or someone talking about the, their day. It's only just purely aesthetical. So you can use it in that way, or you can use it re really, really personally. Uh, but I would say that nowadays you cannot go without social media. It's like a little CV, a little por portfolio of a band, and a lot of like bookers and managers and uh, labels, agencies, are stalking you <laughs> to find out where have you been, what are you doing, which songs are you uh, gonna release and stuff like that. So social media is really important, but I would say like Generation Z are not like, they're not that into social media anymore. So this is, I would say, a really mi millennial thing. And I think it's also depending on the strategy, right? The strategy that you have, uh, well, with the label or as a band or as an artist, maybe sometimes it has to be more static because you work with, uh, let's say, uh, a sports brand and it has to be more pictures, right? Yeah, I, I actually I think that um, you have to do uh, what you feel confident with. If you don't feel confident um, <laughs> by sharing your life, you don't have to do that because uh, it's not going to be natural for the fan either. So you need to be natural. That's the, like the first thing. And I think uh, Dominica said it's like social media is like a portfolio. I think it's more than that because you can interact with the fan and the fan is gonna appreciate it. And also the algorithm uh, of the platform because um, uh, platforms works like that. They uh, recollect, they um, pick up data and interaction um, provide this data. So uh, at some point it's um, good for, for the algorithm. So yeah, um, it's, it's important to make a balance. Now I want to change your question a little bit. Is it uh, enough only to use social media to build a brand? Or you have to still choose some, um, I don't know, collaborations, for example, as a musician to build yourself for, um, for a level where you can um, enter, for example, to the labels? What do you think? I think uh, social media is, um, is a tool, uh, but on the top of that uh, should be the brand. So first, I think, uh, you need to build your brand, your visual identity, your message, what you want to tell, what you want to communicate to your fans, and then use social media to uh, show, show it, communicate it. So yeah, I, I think uh, you need to m do more than that. So collaborations are important, and everything um, has to have a, um, a, it needs to be aligned, I mean. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. We agree. Yes. We are yes. well, absolutely agree. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for the great inputs, guys. So we are um, absolutely agree on that. We have to deal with the social media. But I think it's really hard, for example, um, for an artist just to start to 
uh, create content for the community media without any financial resources. What do you think, what is the point what they have to choose that they have to communicate, for example, in the Instagram, in the Facebook, or any other uh, platforms? What is the main topic what they have to choose in these times? I would say if you have a phone, then you're fine. Because, like, nowadays, especially with TikTok, you don't need, like, really cool videos made from, like, a cool camera and stuff. You only need a, a phone and someone who films it, someone who's passionate about it and has maybe some kind of a talent to do it, not to be like just only still image, but maybe it's some dyna dynamic videos and stuff. But I would say that um, if, like, the platforms are really demanding, so if you don't, don't have the time to do it all, just focus on one platform uh, that is, like, the most um, useful for you, I would say that that's Instagram because um, or maybe even TikTok now, because um, it gathers all the generations you need. Facebook is kind of passé, so Facebook is for boomers, so we don't use that. But maybe some bookers are boomers. It. Yeah, oh. bo bookers <laughs> are, can be boomers, so that's for them. But yeah, I would say focus on one platform and may maybe then use the same like content on Facebook and Instagram and just recycle it but not f be active on all of the pl platforms if you don't have the time to do it. So just focus on one. Yeah, just one thing. But I, I just explored that the, for example, the newcomer bands want to be everywhere. So they creating TikTok channel, Instagram channel, Facebook channel, WhatsApp channel, Telegram channel, and something like that. And after that, everything became a little bit mess because they can focus for one platform only. And uh, yeah, maybe this is the point. And what do you think, what is the, I think most relevant uh, platform for, the, for, for these kind of content. So what do you recommend for, for example, the new artists to start dealing with? For up-and-coming artists, definitely TikTok, because it mm -hmm. has a lot of organic reach and it focuses on people outside your followers' bubbles. So um, on Instagram, you have your followers and this is your primary fan base and your bubble base. I said that, and on TikTok, it's uh, the more important thing. It's your for you page, so it's like um, it's like where people scroll through the TikTok and see it, um, even though they don't follow you. So I would say that's that's the main like platform, TikTok. I think actually a bit differently because um, I think first thing you uh, have to think about is on your audience. So uh, who's who you uh, you wanna reach. Because if it's um, older people, um, maybe they are on Instagram. So, and also Instagram right now, they um, they have features like TikTok. Um, so I mean, like um, they have the real content, real videos, and they reach people that are not in your fan base. So you can reach new people as well as on TikTok. So I think you have to think first on your audience uh, who you wanna uh, you wanna reach and then go to the platform where they are, and yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that, because for example, we have, we work with artists that they are more uh, boomers focused, and there's no one on TikTok, you know? And uh, yeah, you have to identify your audience first, because also, actually, uh, Reels, it's something that Instagram copied from TikTok. Why? Because it, it works on TikTok, but on Instagram, it's different because the, let's say, the Instagram users are different than TikTok users, though. So, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's about identifying the audience, and then you can choose. I can see that younger, younger generations are more relying on TikTok, maybe, to discover new artists. Uh, but let's say someone that, I don't know, sings ballads, right? Uh, it goes maybe more, it fits more on Facebook or Instagram. So I think it depends on that, yeah, the audience. So maybe our output now is to, we have to form a quite strategy to the social media platforms. We had to choose who we want to reach. And after that, we can choose the platforms that TikTok, for example, what you mentioned, and then the other uh, crazy stuff. I just want to focus a little bit for the TikTok in a few moments. Uh, how you can implement this kind of new platform to the di digital strategies like TikTok to this kind of plans? So is it a big deal or we just um, 
have to deal with this algorithm system what TikTok has. So what is your, what is your thoughts? Mm. Well, I think it's not a big deal. Um, I think you need to implement uh, TikTok or in this case, or the platform uh, you choose in your content plans. I think if you have something to communicate, it's important to have a yeah a content plan um, to make it sense. And and yeah, and it's important to, to see when, uh, how you have to communicate things uh, so people don't get crazy. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it, and as Dominica said before, uh, now it's really easy to create content. So you create, you don't need like a huge light ring or a professional camera. You just take your phone and and it's important uh, a decent light. So natural light is perfect to create content. And audio is important as well, but you don't need like a huge uh, production uh, for it. So. Uh, and also, I would recommend to use uh, the features in the in the platform. So, editing videos with the with the own app, and yeah, that's my my tip for it. Yeah, and do tests as well because uh, you don't know what's gonna fit you or what's gonna happen. Like we had this panel at Ment last year, and we hosted Fran Vasilic, who has like two million followers on TikTok. He's from Croatia, and he. Ooh. And he didn't actually um, start to be a singer. He just started to post these covers on TikTok and then actually now he has a band. And he said that he constantly did this test with, with the videos and he posted like two or three, almost the same videos. Only the intro was different, like for one second or for two. So it was only like the first video started with his face like close up. The second one started with a dog maybe or the third one started like far away and like the the first video got like 4 million, the second one got 100, and the, the third one got like 500. So, um, and we talked about why is that? And he was like, I don't know, this is like what people were receiving that day. Um, and I would say like the most, uh, the most you can do is put your, your face on it, like selfies do best, cats and dogs do really good. Little cats and little dogs. Great stuff. Um, when you talk about your album, just have your little dog here and it's going to be perfectly fine. But yeah, it, uh, in the end, it gets to the point that if you don't have uh, really good music, then no video is going to help. So your brand gotta, is, is gotta, your brand is got to like, be quality, not just some um, bad thing. You cannot make a good thing out of a bad thing. So your music gotta, is got to be good. Uh, and then the content is only like to support it. So um, I've just seen this interview with Tyler, the creator, and he said, why, why aren't we talking about music no more? It's only like random stuff and random content. And I agree. It's really about like artists doing everyday shit and not talking about their music. So I think that's the problem with social media nowadays. Uh, but yeah, you do tests and just try different things. And I would recommend uh, not putting longer videos on TikTok because the algorithm is also not in your favor if people don't watch it that long. So if you post like a 30 second video and people watch it 15 seconds, then that means that it's going to run better than if they watch it like five seconds because they see that it, people are enjoying it. So if you have a longer video, that, uh, then there are more like chances that people are going to go out and the algorithm is not going to be in your favor. Um, that's the thing and put captions on it because if people read they tend to stay longer at the videos because your mind is just made like this you like to read and it's subconscious uh, so texts and like close-ups people and beautiful music I would say that's crazy the. okay yeah we had the opportunity to attend to some workshops at meta offices in New York uh, in July with part of our team and they were saying exactly that uh, even if it's a, it's a different platform, but, and also what Anna said, that y you have to use the tools that the platform uh, offers you. Use like CapCut. Ca captions, and, and also they were really insistent in creating, like, uh, yeah, adding more value to the content, like, for example, it's very trendy now, the BTS behind the scenes kind of thing, so, you know, with voiceovers, and, and yeah, how you shoot your video backstage, whatever, but with voiceovers, and that overdub tool, uh, it's provided by Instagram, for example, on, on, on Meta platforms. 
Yep. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that the sounds are really important as well. Um, and the good thing is that on you can uh, put pre-releases, you can post videos with a pre-release snippet on Instagram or TikTok. Uh, so people um, can start listening to your song uh, previously to the release, and that's pretty important as well. So I would take that into account. Thank you so much, guys. Um, Dominico mentioned an interesting thing that we have only one second just to grab the audience uh, eyes and start to start to uh, introduce them the video. What do you think? What is the importance of this first second? What can we just put it in this first frames? What do you think? What is the best strategy? Um, I would say don't do long intros. It's the social media. Do it for YouTube. It's fine. YouTube is a long like. Uh, you take time to watch YouTube videos and stuff, but social media, especially stories and TikToks, like what are, or reels, uh, don't do long videos. Don't do like the black, then fading into the video and stuff because people are gonna just skip it. Um, as I said before, just do like the best thing is your face or somebody's face. Like people like to watch other people, um, and also like cats and animals and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I would say this and maybe the the. Um, like montage is super dynamic. So maybe the first shot is super quick and then you go into the, uh, because your mind gets stimulated. Um, that's some like, I would say, key points. And also the text on the, on the video is really cool. Um, but use sounds as well. This is why TikTok is so amazing because you're, you can do, uh, you can use sounds whichever you want. You can make your own sounds. Um, and I would say like, Test your platform, yeah, see what goes along. If you like release an album, test, maybe do like a video, you, if you release it on a vinyl, maybe do a video of a vinyl and then do a video you holding the vinyl and then do a video of you getting a vinyl to your mom, something like personal and you'll see which video gets the best views, you know, because I would say the mom one will get the best views. Because people can relate, you know, if it's only the vinyl, it's, it's not um, getting like my emotions nowhere so it's the emotions and i would say this kind of empathy for someone that really gets far away far along yeah you can i don't know you can put your mom's reaction when she gets the the vinyl and, and she doesn't care yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's fun too <laughs> and also hooks are very important uh, dominica said before um the first seconds you can play with things like uh, for example, for producers, they uh, can do things like uh, five things you didn't know from producing, I don't know, whatever. But this type of things uh, are also great to build a brand as well. Actually, I just want to uh, insert here a short question. You mentioned so many times, guys, the, the cats and the dogs. Is it true that the algorithm is support more than that content that includes the cats, dogs, human faces and something more? No, I won't say that, but it will deliver that video to the people who watch cats and dogs because of the algorithm, and most people watch cats and dogs. Yeah, but because <laughs> all those things, uh, in a way, ignites emotions on, on people, and that's the way the algorithm works, though, right? So it's like, well, faces, animals, uh, and or keeping the attention, like she was saying, well, five things that you know, and I'm going to tell you, like, the key one, uh, at the end of the video, so we have to stay. So yeah, it's about emotions all the time. It's like the algorithm knows when you're going to get an emotion, right? Yeah, basically because you watch the video until the end and then you interact and then you share it and that's, yeah, that's what the algorithm, algorithm pick up, picks up. But the first 24 hours are the most important for the algorithm, so if the videos, video don't, doesn't get as many views in the fir first 24 hours, then maybe, the next day do almost the same video like the guy Fran did uh, and maybe see what's going on because if you don't go like good in the first day then it's gonna ju only just got, go down and also like DMs and sharing of direct sharing of the videos really support the algorithm as well so the first 24 hours are the most important so when you post it do it maybe in the morning because a lot of people are awake most of the people are awake during the day and you get like more people watching the video until 
24 hours are passed. So don't do it at 10 p.m. because the first eight hours people are, are asleep. So that's one thing, but it depends really on your followers. Maybe if you're a gamer and gamers are that tend to be... It depends on when they sleep. When they sleep, yes. yes. Or, if, or if they do sleep, actually. <laughs> if they do sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and also if, uh, if in case you want to activate a paid media campaign, I would recommend to wait uh, 72 hours because it's important to leave the video uh, live organically, organically and then uh, you can put money behind. So you, yes. first, yeah, so you first just upload the video, wait 72 hours, what you say, and after that we can pay for the advertisements. What do you think, what is the amount, what is starts to make an um, effect on the social media. So maybe it depends on the artist, it depends on the content. But what do you think, what is the minimum what can make uh, sense? There's not a minimum really. So you can invest 20 euros if you, want, if you like. The thing is that when you go into the platform, you can see if you invest 20 euros, how many people you're going to reach. So uh, you can see if uh, it's good for you or, or not. Yeah, and depends on how big is your region you're, you're targeting. But I would say, like, if you put 20 euros for three to four days, the four-day campaign is the best, I would say. It's, on average, the best campaign, but I would say, okay, four to seven days. But 20 euros does make a difference if you know who to target and uh, which, like, age group, which um, gender, and which city to, to put in. But you can all uh, watch this via YouTube because it changes monthly. So we all are YouTube like freaks and just trying to evolve with the social media because it's ever changing. It's so quickly to turn around. Uh, it's crazy, yeah. Okay, so uh, what do you think? How can a content be viral in this kind of platform? So we just um, take so many tips here. To what can we do when we just start to creating content? For example, this one second rule and any other stuff. But uh, getting viral is just about the following the algorithms rules, or it's about it's more about the content what it's included in the videos. For example, what do you think? It can go both ways. You can use like this really viral sound or re really viral dance if you're that kind of a artist, I don't know. Uh, but mostly I would say it's so random. <laughs> it just, you cannot predict what's gonna be viral. It just happens one day, I would say. Like, uh, I've seen it happen before. Yeah, well, recently we had this example with this um, AI song that got viral that it's using Bad Bunny's voice, right? And of course, well, you're mentioning tagging and everything, Bad Bunny there, uh, but how many of these new songs using another cloning voices are on TikTok? But that one, because it was Bad Bunny, and for any reason that we don't know, because of course we don't know how the algorithm works, we can have an idea but I think that mostly TikTok, which is more unpredictable though, right? Uh, Instagram, maybe it's more measurable in that way, I would say, but uh, with that Bad Bunny song, it was like crazy to the point that Bad Bunny was like kind of, why are you listening? We don't like, I don't like it or whatever. But yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's kind of unpredictable though. TikTok, um, in my opinion, maybe Instagram is more. Yeah, I mean, it's true that it's very unpredictable, but if you follow like the tips, yeah, uh, probably your video will uh, work better and maybe one of them gets viral for some reason, but yeah, it's very unpredictable. I want to insert here one question about the live content. So we just mentioned here that in TikTok, for example, we have to create faster contents, but I think the live um, broadcastings, for example, in TikTok, in Instagram, in Facebook, at the boomer way, yeah, um, it's a bit slower content. What do you think about that? It the, the live um, broadcastings can be effective, or it's just a tool, but not uh, not really necessary. What do you think? I would say the only good thing going live is that you skip the whole story, like storyline of people, and you go to the first line. You know, when you watch the the little circles, if you go live, you're the first one on the storyline. Uh, that's, I would say that's the only thing. Live was really big like before or, or during COVID 
but now I think it's not that uh, that's bi that big of a deal. It's kind of time consuming and people don't have time. <laughs> I would say, yeah. Don't don't take time on social media. Well, uh, we normally recommend our artists using it for, for example, when they have a release. Um, in the content plan, we say, okay, so the, the right night uh, of the release, because normally it's at 12 a.m., um, you're gonna do a, um, IG live or TikTok live, uh, like 20 minutes before. So that way you can ask your fans, the fans who are connected, because as Amiga says, uh, you, you're gonna see first of, of all, of all uh, the circle, because you're um, in, a, in a live. Um, so you, you're gonna tell them you're, you're releasing music tonight and tell them, uh, ask them to go to YouTube to see the video so, so you motivate um, the trend on the platform. So it's a good uh, tool for that. Uh, but yeah, normally... <laughs> it's only for it's big campaigns, like releasing a single or, or an yeah. album. It mm -hmm. comes in really handy. Or if you need to tell yes. something special to your fans or something's going on, like you're enduring an event or something, but uh, more than that, yeah, like uh, more uh, audience focused, maybe. For example, for us, uh, we never use it, uh, but uh, sometimes when some other partners that we have that are dedicated to education or for some kind of, well, we're going to have like a, a chat about uh, blockchain or AI. So our followers are interested on that, our, let's say our fan base. So they got connected and they, we can engage with that. But it, it's more audience focused, I would say. Uh, it's also interesting when you do like a, a live with another person, because it's a way to reach uh, his or her audience. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's like a long content and it's uh, hard to keep people watching your live. If a band want to create a Q&A, what do you recommend them? A live video or the chat box that they can use? What is the better way, what do you think? I would say the chat box because of the algorithm and engagement. But yeah, that's my opinion. I don't have like the statistic proof or anything. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> nice. Okay, now I think we can switch a topic a little bit because we already talked a little bit about the AI and I'm really curious about how can, what is the effect what AI can uh, take to the social media, the social media content creating for example. So what do you think guys, how can we use uh, for example open AI or this uh, image creating AIs to create content to the social media for ourselves? What do you think, what is it? I think Anna would know this a lot better, uh, probably by working with artists directly, but I would say if there is any artist in the audience as well, artists, they don't like to create content. They hate it, some of them. It's like, Agreed. Uh, right? Well, labels would say, you have to upload the trend to TikTok. Do I have to dance? Yes. Or not. <laughs> I don't like it, you know, or, or, or anything. So AI, it's going to, it, it's already providing actually on TikTok, that there is a lot of AI tools now on TikTok that you can use. But AI will provide that thing uh, that it will be more used uh, in the coming months probably, uh, where they will be able to create content by using these tools. So they'll be more relieved in a way like, well, I don't have to do it. We're gonna put uh, my avatar or whatever. There are a lot of, artists now working, actually there are a lot of influencers, AI generated, uh, mostly in, in Asia. But for example, uh, AI is going to bring a lot of tools that will uh, help to be more proactive in some other areas, which is basically create music for the musicians. We have the example of Rosalia releasing a new song with Bjork yesterday or the day before. Uh, and the video, it's uh, AI generated with deep fakes. So she never got there, they never got together, uh, but the video is there. So you may like it or not, but it's providing something that I think in the end, it will make more efficient. The release probably, uh, and a lot of other things. But mostly this frustration that the artist feels when they have to create content and they don't like it. 
And we struggle a lot with the bands that we have in our labels. You have to upload things, you have to create content. We have a content plan. They never respect it, they never follow it. They hate it, some of them. Sorry. Um, yeah, artists are, well, regarding uh, AI, uh, artists normally are like, mm, they don't like it. It's like they're gonna steal our jobs and uh, creativity is gonna disappear, but I don't think it's that. For example, um, a couple of weeks ago, I went to an event, a meta event in Madrid, and Omar Montes, the Spanish artist, was there, and the, the audience asked uh, Omar uh, about the AI, and Omar said, I, I don't understand why Bad Bunny has uh, got angry of the, uh, because of the song with his voice. I think it's uh, an advance because mm, I'm gonna save uh, time in the record studio. So it's gonna, so I think AI is going to um, uh, uh, save uh, time, yeah, time uh, in repetitive tasks, for example. So I think it's, uh, it's good, it's a good thing. Do you use AI in your daily works? Only chat GPT. Yeah, me too. Yes, actually, we, 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 did, uh, we made a panel yesterday here uh, to explain to everybody how we use it uh, on a day-to-day -day basis in our company. And we explained a lot of tools. We have our own tool that we developed, which is called Wolfie. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, and, and it's, uh, we actually have a different way of working uh, because we are a remote team living all around the world and we were spending so much time with things like sending emails and now we're saving a lot of time or one tool that we were explaining yesterday and, and like showing it's a tool that allows you to transcribe audios on whatsapp so we are all around these trade shows or concerts or festivals in the middle of this concert we can't listen to the audios so we can transcribe them and that's ai and that's more you know brings a tool that makes everything more easy maybe and there are a lot of tools for royalty analysis for well a lot i think it's going to save us a lot of time to the point that i think in the uk now they are saying uh we're going to um like regulate the four days week because there's going to be one day that we won't do anything because AI will do it. So how great is that? Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I just want to insert here a question to our audience. Please raise your hands if you tried, for example, ChatGPT or any other AI tools before. And please raise your hands Jeez, if you everybody wants to use it in daily basis. Okay, quite the same. Okay, I think it's a great result. Thank you, guys. So, what do you think? Uh, did you uh, do you feel the AI influence in your daily work? Uh, do you feel that the artists, for example, or the musicians started to explore it, or it's a um, quite a new thing? I can say, and we have to uh, try to try to help them to learn to use it. What do you think? I think that it's going to be very uh, useful for artists and for labels as well. And uh, yeah, even any copyright holder. But let's say that you're an artist and this is like creating a new business model as well. For example, we have Grimes, which is uh, an artist that she, it's offering her voice. So everybody, anybody could have a feature with, with Grimes. Uh, there is an artist from, from Catalonia called Maria Arnal, and she did exactly the same. So you're sharing uh, royalties with the original artist, and the original artist, it's, uh, let's say, you have a feature with this artist, but it's not like uh, Grimes. It's Grimes AI, right? But that's a, a new business model. So we can have Bad Bunny AI, we can have Paul McCartney AI, and you can have a song with Paul McCartney AI, right? So maybe you're a, a big fan of Paul McCartney and you can have a song with him and, and maybe, I don't know, it adds more value to your catalog or whatever, but that's a new business model for labels or right holders. So I think that's something good. And also it will, help, it will help in the creation of music. We can have more content, we can have more rich content because, of course, 
we will need the emotion. If we generate a lyric uh, with Wolfie, for example, our tool, or ChatGPT, uh, you can't copy that and paste it and, and release the track. No, you have to work on it. And maybe you will get such a rich idea that you would like to enrich it more with your human huma humanity, right? Which is, I, I think, it's the most important thing that we have to keep developing in order to work well with the machines that are going to be seated here in the upcoming 25, 30 years. We will live with machines, so we need to understand how to deal with them with our emotions. Not Terminator at all. Nothing to that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what I, I'm really curious about that on your daily work, how could you follow this kind of changes? So, AI just um, surprised us, I think, a little bit. That it, it was a really fast uh, thing that ChatGPT just released, everybody just started to try it, and uh, they just released the new version of ChatGPT, and now we have uh, picture creating uh, AIs and uh, mastering AIs and something more. How could you follow it, and you have to follow it? For, for your work? Not really, because it's a really new thing, and uh, we need regulation and all that stuff. So uh, we're not using it. Well, in the label, we're not. We can't use it because it's not regulated yet. So, um, I mean, I use uh, ChatGPT for ideas, but yeah, that's all. I don't know. Were you asking about the social media, like, or? So in relation to AI. about the social media, so because maybe the following the algorithm, trying to recognize the new things, it, it's, yeah. it's 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 a hands. It's yeah. really interesting. But how could you reach this? So my question is, how could you uh, follow these rules? You are uh, testing the contents every time, for You're example. You're constantly on it. It's that's why it's a job, you know. Uh, I would recommend that if you you have a band. Uh, you have only one person focused working on social media just because the narrative w w is going to be the same, the language spoken on social media is going to be the same, the aesthetic is going to be the same. So maybe don't like spread it around three people, only one, and that one one person should really follow the the like I would say the whole changing thing because uh, it really changes fast. Uh, I'm on it like every day, and I see changes every day. Um, so if you have like one person who is really enthusiastic about it, just yeah, he has to be on social media all the time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so I think we can. Uh, we we have only ten minutes left, I think, and after that we can just pass the mic to the to our audience. So if you have any questions, just please <laughs> wait ten more minutes and you have a chance to ask it. But uh, before that, I have a take a step to the future for a little bit, because uh, Christian, you are dealing with so amazing thing, what I already know about it, it's really small, so I think I have so many great questions about it. But the first question is for the audience. Uh, please raise your hands if you ever hear about DeFi, decentralized financing. And Raise your hands if you know what it means. <laughs> okay, so I think we have now a little bit chance. He to... works with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is the time where we can talk a little about about a little about a little about it. Sorry for that. Yeah, and uh, my question is: Is it a thing? Um, this kind of new elements at the music industry. What I have to deal with if I am a beginner or it just for the experts? What do you think I have to deal with that when I just starting my career, for example? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that, but I think it's something that it's coming on mostly now that we're, uh, we have the platforms changing the model. For example, now Spotify is going to pay you uh, when you get to 1,000 listeners. Before that, you're not going to get paid. So then you can think in different ecosystems or different ways to engage with your fans, and that's communities, right? So to integrate that, uh, let's say, music sales that you can uh, have by selling your music throughout that community, uh, you need a system that it has to be transparent. 
this is something that could be blockchain based, right? And DeFi, it's blockchain based, it's decentralized finance. So you will have your community of fans that could be a WhatsApp group, could be a Telegram group, or could be anything, but you can give them something like a token, or you can tokenize your work, right? Put that into the blockchain, let's put it like simple, and get paid straight away. The thing is, and you're not going to get any intermediary there, okay? But we need to regulate that, as you were saying with AI and with any advanced technology, you need a regulation. Because we need to integrate that, for example, with PROs, right? So to integrate that with PROs, we have to have a ledger, a database, that has to be very transparent in order to everybody can adopt it in the future. So one day it will happen. There are a lot of interest in the middle of it, but everybody has, I think, I would suggest to explore Web3 communities, okay? In order, because we know a lot of artists that are living uh, for, they are just making music and they live pretty well, and they are not on Spotify. And how? They have a community of 100 fans, and they pay a subscription to get a key, an access key, which is a token, to get their music uh, every month or whatever. So we are saying, we're talking about 10, uh, yeah, sorry, 100 fans paying 10 euros a month. I think that's enough for a living, right? So explore Web3 communities. And that's DeFi in a way, and that's blockchain for the music industry. But there's a lot more, that, that's another panel. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope we have a chance to, <laughs> to talk about it for a longer time. Uh, you mentioned so many times the regulations for the AI, for example, or these kind of new technologies. What do you think, what could be a great regulation for that uh, cases? And what is the parts what you uh, think we have to regulate in this kind of phase? They have to regulate uh, the usage. AI has to be regulated because they are using a lot of copyrighted works, right? This is why Google and its model, Music LM, was never released because it's using to train, it's using copyrighted work. And labels, they have to get paid for it. Uh, authors, they have to get paid for it. So, yeah, it needs to be regulated. And the blockchain thing as well, it's been trying to be regulated for a long time. It's getting there now more in the financial world, world, but yeah, every, every new technology, it's scary, right? Like the phone, you know? Can you imagine the first guy picking up a phone and speaking with another guy like it was 10 kilometers away and I said, I can listen to this guy, it's 10 kilometers away. How, how magic is that, right? So when we, get, we got that regulated in a way, uh, everybody's using it, they don't know, maybe we don't know how it works, the technology itself, so it will be the same in the future, but we need the regulation. So we need more discussion, we need more panels, we need to talk more about it. Okay, now uh, a little bit relaxed time comes for me, because we can just pass the microphone to our audience just to ask some questions. So, if somebody wants to... Yeah? Hi. Hola. Hi, uh, my name is Javier and I have a question. One thing we haven't talked about is about influencer marketing. and I think that that's a big thing. Uh, I'm an artist, I recently qualified for the mission programs on TikTok and actually I wanted this question addressed to Anna because I got a notification from Sony Music for the new song of Enrique Iglesias <laughs> because they wanted to create, they wanted because, to pay me to create content mission. for Enrique Iglesias and it was really, I mean, it was an honor. <laughs> And I really wanted to know how uh, big labels, uh, you know, multinationals, and in general, like music promotion, is moving to a point in which you need some kind of influencer. Even though, like, I have like 2,000 followers, it's not even that big to qualify for the mission programs. But you kind of need like people to start the trend organically. Uh, but now it's getting like mixed with media, and it's a big mess. And I don't understand anything. So please uh, show some light. Sure. Yeah, it's a mix. Um, yeah, it's a mix between influencer marketing and, and paid media as well. Um, it's the, the best thing is doing it organically first and, and then, yeah, maybe activating paid media. But for, to me, the organic part is like the most important. And influencer marketing, it depends on your strategy. But first, if a song is not trendy uh, yet, 
um, it doesn't make sense to hire Lola Lolita, for example, to upload a video with your song because it doesn't make sense at all. Uh, it's like fans are gonna be like, um, how Lola Lolita could listen to this song all of a sudden, you know? So you need to work on a strategy. So start it, um, starting like from small profiles, small, you know, small uh, community influencers, and then from that uh, going up. And then, um, yeah, paid media, it depends on your strategy. It depends, totally. But yeah, you can activate, as we said before, for example, if you want to uh, activate paid media with a content, uh, wait for 17 hour, uh, 72 hours first to see how it performs organically, and then just uh, activate the campaign if you need it. We can talk about this later if you need. <laughs> okay, other question? Guy, hello. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. For Thank you very much. It was, uh, was it is really interesting. Um, well, maybe it's a dumb question, but uh, I'm coming from the prehistoric age where there was no social media, and so I was wondering if uh, it's still possible for an artist to emerge without using social media, and if you do have some example of people that yeah have emerged and are really like well known, or at least they are selling their their stuff without using social media or if it's now we are in the digital age and it's no question you have to use it and that's it i was wondering about that where were maybe you before the, maybe it's not the, <laughs> the right place to ask it but no no we really, specialist but. yeah uh you have to have social media that's it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it i would say it's really difficult uh you really have to focus on like old-fashioned media as well like don't don't forget about radio, TV, magazines and stuff. It's really important as well nowadays. But um, social media, yeah, it's like your identity card for the brand. It's, like, it's the media you're carrying out with you every time because you have your phone and it's uh, where you get informed, with you, where you share your, the content you like. But yeah, uh, traditional media is important because, for example, I was thinking before that radio, uh, you listen to it when you go... Um, on, in a taxi or something, and, or in the supermarket, and you, you're not uh, putting att attention on it, but it's there, and maybe you listen to the song later, and you think, ah, oh, I know this song because, you know, so it's important to take that into account, but um, yeah, developing a project without social media right now, I think is really difficult. I don't know if impossible or not, but... Special thank you for this radio thing, what you said. <laughs> Okay, any other question, guys? Come on. It not hurts you. Okay, so <laughs> I think we can, we can... Oh, yeah, one more question. Nice, Akos. Yeah, just one more comment. That uh, I, I also really enjoyed the whole discussion, and I really liked that at the very beginning, you, Christian, mentioned the, uh, the importance of storytelling, because a few weeks ago, and I don't want to overtalk the artificial intelligence, but a few weeks ago I had the chance to attend on a workshop where the organizers showed us and introduced us the potential of artificial intelligence in composing music. And there was a guy who had nothing to do with music. He gave some prompts to the artificial intelligence, and within a few minutes there was a piano play, one of the best piano play that I've ever heard in my life. And um, <clears throat> I was thinking after it that there is no person behind it, there is no story behind it. And would the doors be, uh, have been so popular without knowing who was Jim Morrison, or that's so true to Elvis, that without his life, without uh, knowing him anything, his music is not the same, would not be the same. But I think that uh, artificial intelligence tools will be widely available in the next few years and even I who has nothing to do with music would try to make something and so far knowing two accords playing on a guitar would have been enough to play something on YouTube but I guess in the next years there will be a lot of people and overwhelming content on the social media and I guess it can be a challenge to you even for the studios to select or so i I'm, I'm really curious of your opinion how this artificial intelligence 
tools that will be available in the next years might change your work or might change the, your working routine. The example that I always mention is like uh, the, back in the day in New York, the, sky, the skyscrapers, you had a guy uh, that used to be a man uh, that will uh, drive the elevator, right? I don't know the, in English how it's called, but yeah, it's like the ascent, uh, yeah, for the, ele the, the elevator man, right? <laughs> Let's call it that. So uh, as soon as the technology advanced came like a reality for that, uh, the elevators, uh, that guy lost his job. But then we have a lot of new jobs with technicians and with the people that it's repairing the electronics and so, some jobs are going to be uh, like, let's say, um, yeah, they're, they're, some people will lose their jobs, but some other people, we, AI and advanced technology will create new, new jobs. Regarding music, uh, I think it, it will be the same. And it will be more democratic, let's say, maybe some people with no musical knowledge at all can create something good. The same thing as we have Bisa Rap from my country, Argentina, which is not a huge musician, but he's creating like top number one hits in the world, thanks to the technology, to synthesizers and to drum machines. Uh, I think because back, uh, let's say behind that, you have the emotions, right? Uh, it could be very, let's say, simple for you as a musician, mostly if you have like a classical formation or academic formation. But it's music, and it's on the top of the world, and it brings and drives emotions uh, the same. So it will be more democratic, maybe, the creation. But don't be afraid of it. Uh, just play with it. Use it as a tool, because it's just that. Yeah, also, I think, also I think that uh, AI works with information that already exists. So uh, humans... Yeah, yeah. We are the only ones uh, who are able to create new, new stuff. So I think it's not like a big um, thread. Okay, I want to say thank you for the great inputs to Dominika Massa, who is a musician, manager, and digital marketing head at the Urban Culture Center, Kino, Shishka, and Ment Jubiana Festival. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for Christian La Rosa, founder and director of Grupo La Rosa, a consultancy focused on financing and new technologies for music. And thank you so much for Anna Castillo, digital product manager at Sony Music. Thank you so much, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.